This year, the day before my birthday, Labour was elected as the new UK government after 14 years of Conservative rule. And they are now proposing a bunch of changes, including a new employment rights bill, a new national budget, and a controversial law to ban hot people. <gasps> if you're too hot, it's the guillotine for you. Margot Robbie, dead. Henry Cavill, dead. Gillian Anderson, very dead. So dead. Utterly deceased. This is the future liberals want. I'm joking. I'm just having a jolly. The government can't do that. Not because it's wrong to kill people, but because beauty is subjective. Or is it? Oh, in case you're wondering, who is she? <laughs> My name is Tara Mooney and this is the only channel on YouTube where all videos are written and produced by a cow. She couldn't be in the video today because she's actually speed dating, but if you like and subscribe, she might appear in the next video. Seriously, subscribe. We make super duper intellectual content over here. Classical masterpieces such as My Boyfriend Cheated on Me with My Nanny, a very true animated story, and the canonical work, a definitive ranking of cows and pop culture. Speaking of high art, I'd like to offer a commendation for Espresso, composed by Sabrina Carpenter. That's that me espresso. What did she mean when she wrote that? Is it a haiku? I've been agonizing over this for hours. More than I ever did over texts I studied during my literature degree. I'm working late because I'm a singer. After working late, I like to blow off steam, reduce stress, and I do so with the help of today's sponsor, Lilo. In case you live under a rock, Lilo is a luxury pleasure brand. Leading the self-care movement Movement, providing pleasure that transcends gender, orientation, race, and age. They aid ecstasy without shame, arming you, and perhaps a partner, with the confidence to lead a fulfilled, intimate life. There is no better time to treat yourself because Black Friday is approaching. So take the opportunity to seize Lilo's incredible deals on premium pleasure toys. My personal recommendation is the Enigma Double Sonic, now available at a discount for the first time. It has a sleek premium design that comes in two stylish colorways. It's also app connected where you can use an app to unlock two additional modes and therefore fully customize your experience. You won't need a shot of espresso after using that. Don't tell my girl Sabrina. Actually, she'd support you. I think over the last year, I've heard from a lot of people like, wow, like she's just like the horniest girl alive because sometimes in my songs I say some crazy things on stage. But I'm actually a very normal amount of horny. She's unapologetically horny and that's what our foremothers died for. Treat yourself or a loved one this Black Friday and unlock extra savings by using my code Mooney15 for an extra 15% off. Go to the link below in the description and switch it up like Nintendo. My honeybee, come and get this pollen. Thank you, Lilo. <laughs> I have recently fallen down a dark, dark rabbit hole of reels where there are street interviews, drunk people, and rating people on a scale of 1 to 10. Is that not the most haunting cocktail of grotesque garbage you've ever heard of? What do you rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10? A 7. Do you think other people would agree? Yes. What do you rate this girl on a scale of 1 to 10? I don't know, like a 3 or 4. 3 or 4? Yeah. That's crazy. What do you rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10? I give myself a solid 7, 8 on a good day. Do you think other people would agree? I hope so. What do you rate this guy on a scale of 1 to 10? 3 out of 10. Alright, what do you rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10? Um, a 10. Do you think other people would agree? Uh, probably not. What do you guys rate yourselves on a scale of one to ten. Six or seven. Like a five. Do you guys think other people would agree? I'm so scared. I hope. I don't know. What do you rate these girls on a scale of one to ten? Three on the left, five on the right. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I was under the impression that rating people only happened when you were in secondary school, not as a grown adult. What would you guys rate these girls on a scale of one to ten? Let me get a four. Look. Left is a two, right is a four, so we'll go with three. Ooh. 
Also, where did this whole rating people on a numerical scale come from? Did someone invent that? Or has it just always been the case? Like, did Henry uh. VIII do that with his many wives? Do you reckon he did a tier ranking of his wives? Jay Seymour, S tier. I found a couple of early examples of the numerical approach to attractiveness. In 1979, Blake Edwards directed a rom-com called Ten, and it sounds riveting. A famous lyricist facing midlife crisis finds himself infatuated with a newlywed Jenny. He follows her on her honeymoon to Mexico, but later realises his mistake and gets back with his girlfriend. On a scale from 1 to 10, Blake Edwards presents a 10. You're becoming obsessed with a beautiful young girl. Even though he doesn't know who she is, he'll cross the hottest sands. Because on a scale from 1 to 10, George Weber is about to meet an 11. 1. The synopsis includes the ending, so why would I bother watching it now? 2. Justice for his girlfriend. Men have nothing if not audacity. There was also the funk song She's a 10 by Ozone released in 1982. <laughs> I hate that I don't hate it. I do hate this line though. I know the girl's ten. She keeps her body thin. Now, back to the cursed content that I opened with. Six. Do you think other people would agree? No. What do you rate this girl on a scale of one to ten? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Six point seven five. It's garbage, but I have to admit it is addictive. I am no better. I am a mere voyeur. What do you rate this guy on a scale of 1 to 10? Like a 7? He's a 3. This goes to show that A. You can't win, especially as a woman. If you rate yourself too low, you're seen as fishing for compliments, and if you rate yourself too highly, then you are seen as arrogant and delusional and in a good need of humbling. B. It's subjective. Obviously. Different people like different things. Da doi. Three. People are mean. No, that, that's a hard zero for me. The whole point of this content is to get people to debate the attractiveness of the people in the videos. That's it. And can we please ditch numerical ratings of attractiveness? It's weird and pointless. Just say if you think they're hot or not. It's also very funny to see people in the comments getting so riled up over people getting the wrong answers. Women, he was definitely not a three. FFS, he is at least a 5 or 6. She was also a 5. All these people are average, or slightly above average. That's how scales work. Yeah. That is what happens when you try to put an objective scale on something subjective. Now, you might retort, but Tara, some people are just hotter than others. That's a fact of life. And yeah, Sure, but the answer to the question of who is hotter is not an innate truth. On the flip side, it is peculiar to see how audacious some people men, can be. <laughs> You'll see men on X calling Margot Robbie mid and Sir, you would be so lucky. Now, the Manosphere fellas would likely respond to me saying that Women have too high expectations. All these uglies want six foot seven dudes who earn two hundred thousand dollars a year and bleh. They'd say it's the reverse. So yeah, I do believe that beauty is subjective and everyone is capable of finding someone who is attracted to them. However, I am aware that beauty standards exist and communities come to a sort of consensus on what this idea of conventional beauty is, whether everyone is actually attracted to it or not. And this consensus varies from culture to culture, further illustrating the point that it is not objective truth. So, assuming you agree with this assertion, perhaps some people are spending too much time online seeing influencers, people who are often successful because of their attractiveness, or they spend too much time watching porn, and or consuming media where in Hollywood you need to be seen as above average to be represented. With all these factors, it is no surprise that we are seeing people where their perception of beauty is completely warped and their expectations are whack.
Have people gotten too hot? Or has our exposure to hotness rotted our brains? Just as I was writing this video, an article was published on Dazed by Juno Kelly. I enjoy a lot of Dazed stuff, so Dazed, let me write for you. Here's a sample of my work. Most men are like Bluetooth. He is connected to you when you are nearby, but searches for other devices when you are away. Women are like Wi-Fi. She sees all available devices, but connects to the strongest one. That doesn't even make sense. You know Wi-Fi can be connected to multiple devices at a time, right? Now, have people gotten hotter? Perhaps we're healthier, we have more beauty aids and resources, as long as if you have the money. Though I do think it's more about our exposure to hotness. I see hot people, and the twist is, I'm also hot. That's what happens in that film, right? Before I get into this section, I want to make it clear that there isn't a scientific consensus on what I'm going to talk about. There is evidence to suggest that consuming porn affects your sex drive and taste, but there isn't a scientific consensus on this. There's merely been studies on this. So please bear that in mind when I discuss this. The psychology of social media is a very new field. So again, there isn't yet a consensus on how social media affects how we perceive beauty and our sex drives etc. Anyways, let's crack on. Let's say you have the top one percentile of hot people, according to the cultural beauty standard anyway. Back in the day you'd only see these people in films or magazines, whereas now we have the internet on our phones, in our hands, and these people are pushed to us all over social media. This leads to what Kelly has coined as the standard warp. A 2014 study conducted by Carlotta Bartz, assistant professor of psychology at Franklin and Marshall College and the director of the Preferences Lab, found that participants with access to the internet favoured more masculine men and thinner, more feminine women. The internet influences our perceptions of what it is that we find attractive, she tells Dazed. It's a theory bolstered by a later study by Bartz, which found that our visual diet, or the faces we see most, on or offline, shapes our perception of what's beautiful. Oh no. And let me get real with you for a sec. I've seen this happening with how I view myself. My feed used to just be cute animals, but now it is full of girlies with massive, perfect blowouts, and they look like that fish from Shark Tale. Also, don't you just love the phrase visual diet? Aren't words cool? Wow. My visual diet mostly consists of these guys, so I guess I can't complain. So back to the standard warp. What is the knock-on effect? Well, if your standards are to the point where you only find Instagram models attractive, you're not going to have that initial attraction to normies. In the olden days, they would see 200 baddies in their whole life. And now in it's their like, whole life. In their whole life. And now it's like, they are desensitized to it. Yeah. And sometimes I'll have conversations with my guy friends where I need to check them where I'm like, you need to check yourself. They'll be like, oh, well, her hair wasn't perfect or her, she didn't have like veneers. So I, I just didn't. And I'm like, you are a four at best. Like, this is insane. You think that the you have access. You actually, they're so delusional. They think that they're they so can fucking delusional. bag like these hot girls because there's so many then hot girls on them. Instagram. And, and it's twofold because we are living in a world where online dating is the norm, which is all the more focused on initial attraction. And listen, I know some people have success, but I'm going to... I'm gonna say a real hot take here. Online dating sucks. <gasps> I know, that was really stunning and brave of me to say. It just takes all the fun out of having a crush and it eliminates the possibility of gradual building attraction. Therefore, I would argue that this standard walk would be less of an issue if we met people more in real life, because the lack of initial attraction can be remedied by getting to know a person. Kelly also highlights how having hotness on tap tricks us into believing that those super duper hotties are within reach. There's a parasocial element to the influences we see on social media, and dating app profiles are the most curated versions of these people. And then we have the illusion of unlimited options. I only found this out recently because I got banned from him. Yeah. <laughs>
I only used it for about 20 minutes and it said I broke some user guidelines. So I've never been able to use it since. I didn't send any unsolicited dick pics. But anyway, Hinge has standouts. So these are heavily liked people where you need a premium subscription to match with. So then the regular options seem less desirable. It's pretty brutal. Now let's pump the brakes. After hyper-focusing on this for days, it, it did occur to me. Is this really that bad? It, or is it just me being chronically online? Are we having another moral panic? If you take the title of this article literally, then yes, it would be. No one would be in happy relationships, except supermodels. The problem is that more people are being affected by this phenomenon, and that the percentage will only grow with younger generations growing up on social media, particularly young boys, which I will expand on in a minute. So I would argue that our beauty standards online are less forgiving than the ones we have in real life, because the internet gives us more anonymity, to be more cutting with our opinions. But also it's because the internet is funneling beauty standards via algorithms. The more you see these standards, the more you expect them. Whereas in real life, you can't curate how the people around you look, at least I hope. But the more people who spend lots of time online, the more these standards blur. It isn't totally dissimilar to the phenomenon of men who watch too much porn who are then unable to be aroused by women in real life. And I'm not saying this is the majority of men. I don't want to declare a moral panic. I just want to prompt us to keep an eye on this, especially the generations that have been growing up on social media, particularly young boys. Because even though girls and women can be afflicted by this standard warp, heterosexual men and boys are more susceptible to it. Inherently, because women are just more sexualized on a regular basis. Women are more likely to be content creators, so they appear more in the algorithm. Prawn? Need I say more? Kelly also makes a good point about how unconventional attractiveness is designed by women in a more mainstream scale. So think rodent boyfriends, dad bods, none of these words are in the bible. <laughs> Not even rodent. Did Jesus have a dad bod? <laughs> women however rarely get the same grace with thinness, youth and femininity still being prized above all else. In other words, not only is women's self-esteem likely to suffer due to online content, but men may be less likely to fancy them because of it. This isn't just about beauty standards though. Is she 10 or is she mid? Definitely mid. mid. Yeah, Can mid. you explain why? Because listen, she looks like how women are supposed to look, right? Ideally... So wouldn't that make her a 10? Right, but like mid, when we're comparing her to others, right, to the, to the ideal woman, I would say she kind of fits into that. You know, I would say a 10 goes like above and beyond. I see women who look like her all over the place, you know. Where I'm from in Chicago, they're everywhere. So. Okay, so is it good that Hollywood is actually promoting a woman that looks like a real woman? Yeah, it is. Uh, although I think ideally Hollywood should promote beauty standards that go above and beyond normality. I think that we should not settle for mediocrity in general in life and that we should promote excellence. And now we can see this with women, but we can also uh, see this uh, manifest itself in politics and life. Uh, the beauty standard should always go above and beyond. Edgelord men aren't calling Margot Robbie mid because they've been desensitized to beauty. It's misogyny. And like, listen, you're allowed to not think Margot Robbie's all that. I just don't think these men are saying it in good faith. They're putting down a woman who's being celebrated for being beautiful. They're trying to knock her down a peg. Remember the aforementioned study where people who are more aligned tend to be more attracted to more masculine men and more feminine women. That also isn't just about attractiveness, but reinforcing gender roles for a larger agenda. All of this is connected. The internet is doing the most in dividing the genders. I mean, look at the hard gender split between Trump voters versus Harris voters. So this all sounds very grim, doesn't it? Is it really all that bad? I would argue that for many single people, it can be, and it could get worse. However, it doesn't have to be. Genuinely, I think this concept of conventional attractiveness is a self-fulfilling prophecy. There is a beauty standard, granted, but that doesn't mean that that is what everyone requires 
to fancy someone. No skin, hair, eye colour is inherently more attractive. Seeing a wider range of looks, body types, ethnicities, and just having more representation opens people up to being attracted to different things. We are attracted to familiarity, what we've been exposed to. Side note, dating types are totally a construct. I remember once I was on a date a few years ago with a bisexual man and he was saying, oh, I think they're a hetero construct. I think they're a very hetero thing. I agree to an extent because there is this idea of gentlemen prefer blondes and straight white people are really obsessed with hair color, like the rivalry between blondes and brunettes. It's so funny to me watching these women debate over if they have brown or blonde hair or not, or if they have green eyes or not, or blue eyes or if they have hooded eyes or not. It's quite literally white on white crime, quite literally. And you've got blondes posting videos like, <laughs> like saying that the worst possible thing is having short black hair and I'm just sitting there like. But there are types in queer dating as well. But anyways, uh, about six months ago, I made a community post asking for your opinions on this because I was going to make a video on dating types. But then I decided not to because there wasn't enough meat for a full video. You know me, I'm such a carnist. But I did get some valuable insights as I always do from you guys. So for most of you, saying someone is not your type is just a polite way of saying that. They're not your cup of tea. It could also be interesting to spot patterns in your dating history. But to declare that you have a type and to let it dictate your dating choices is another thing. And it limits your options and prevents you from finding someone truly compatible. I think there's a difference between having a type, i.e. finding certain characteristics in the whole other person attractive, versus having prejudices or alternatively exoticizing, fetishizing commonalities of groups of people. And that issues arise when those two ideas are conflated. It is totally fine to find yourself attracted to certain things more than others. But I find the concept of having a type as an inclusion criteria, widening the dating pool for instance, oh I'm attracted to X so I'm more likely to date someone with it, but not a deal breaker, generally tends to be more banal. Whereas the concept of a type leveraged as an exclusion criteria, I don't date people without X, I only date people with Y, is more likely to get icky. This of course does not apply to basic traits that make someone good natured. For who would not want to be with someone who is kind? Who would not consider cruelty as a deal breaker? But for now I just want to give you some reassurance because I know this all sounds very grim. If you are looking for love and I'm specifically talking to women who date men because I think this is different with queer people, I would really recommend getting off the apps. I know you don't want to hear it because it's so difficult to meet people, I get it, but dating apps are like the Hunger Games. Ask your friends to set you up, go to things, meet actual humans. And two, girlies, find yourself an offline boyfriend. So these are the guys that I'm not talking about today. Of course, they still live in a society, but the primary reason for all this mess I've been discussing is that people spend too much time online. Hot kettle, I know. So how do we reset our beauty detectors and get back to appreciating potential partners and their personalities, which is, after all, just as important, in the flesh? While unplugging from the hot mate entirely may be impossible, thinking critically and limiting your time in it could help loosen its grip. And there it is. I got a comment on my last video that said, this is a great talent to make such long videos about some stupidly, absolutely bullshit topic. And if that's not video essay core, I don't know what is. My ancestors survived the potato famine for this. A quick housekeeping note, you may have noticed that I haven't been including my subscription pet shout out in the past few videos. And the reason for this is that I set up an email and it just mainly gets spam. So I'm gonna set up a new system. I think I'm gonna do a Google form. I will be announcing this on my YouTube community tab in the near future. So we'll be back to it for my next video. So keep an eye on that if you'd like to submit one of your little little guys or gals. I'm so excited to read all the submissions from all the good boys and girls. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out Lilo. Thank you to my patrons. Go on there for bonus footage and deleted videos. I also had some extra thoughts that I was going to add in this video, but I didn't want it to be too long and rambly. So yeah, go check that out if you fancy. Okay, I'm out. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.